Hello, friends, and welcome back to Midweek Encouragement. Haven't seen you since last year. <laughs> yeah, we get that for the first several weeks of the new year. But I am delighted that you are joining me today as we begin 2023. Can you believe it? We have gone that long. Hey, uh, a few years ago, a friend of mine said, hey, uh, we've got this mower over here, and this is what it's doing. This is what was done to it, and it's we're just afraid it's not going to work right. Would you like to have it? So I went and picked it up, discovered that the problem was when they changed the oil, they put too much oil in. Yeah, they, they've changed the way mowers are put together. And this person had put too much mower in, too much oil in and it was smoking like it was fogging the community or something. So I, it didn't take me long, but before you knew it, I had it fixed and running right. It started on the first pull after I put gas in it. And then I took it and I gave it to a neighbor who was in need of a lawnmower. And they used it for quite a few years until they got something even better. Then... It wasn't that long ago, I was at a garage sale and they had this mower sitting there and I looked at it and they said, well, it's not running right now, but if you can get it running, just come back and pay us when you get it running. I took it home, tinkered on it, put about $25 worth of parts in it and it started right up. I went to pay them and they said, don't worry about it. You can just have it. And then I took that mower and I gave it to a man who likes to go around and mow grass for some certain people that have some mobility issues or other problems. He likes to use it for his ministry. And what a delight it was to take those mowers that somebody said, these are useless, they're not worth anything, I don't want them, and take what was considered junk and make it into something good. Now, I am not a small engine mechanic. I don't claim to be, I don't want to be, I just have been taught how to tinker and how to not give up. It's not really broken until you throw in the towel and throw it in the trash. And I can prove that I'm not a small engine mechanic because there's still one sitting out in my shed that I haven't figured out what the problem is. I think it may be an upcoming magic trick because I think I might need to make that one disappear. But how many times in our lives... Have we ever felt like we're sort of like the mower? Not wanted, not useful, broken down, and people just want to get rid of us. I think many times we have felt useless and not worth much of anything, uh, especially when things aren't going the way we feel they should. There have been negative experiences. What, what are some of the hardest things that you've ever experienced? I think we need to face those experiences, stop sweeping them under the rug, and that's not easy to do, but it is doable. We all desire to move on, but what we need to do is have the courage and the strength to go back and say, what went wrong? And how did I feel about what went wrong? How can I bring this to Jesus and ask, will you change me? Will you help me? Uh, Will you give me some more patience? Will you bring me some more clarity? Will you give me understanding about the next decision I need to make so that I don't get into this repeat cycle of things that aren't going right? So uh, think about this. Think about Peter. Jesus looked at Peter, one of his disciples, and said, Simon, Simon, Satan wants to sift you like wheat, but I have prayed for you. And when you return, strengthen the brothers. It wasn't long after that that Peter uh, in John 18 is warming himself, and some translations say he was warming, warming himself by a charcoal fire. Oh. And right after that, the rooster crows. Now, I, I've kind of begun to wonder as I read that about the rooster crowing, maybe that's why at so many church dinners we serve fried chicken. Getting our revenge? Nah, we just do it because we like chicken. But but I find it interesting that those versions of the Bible that say that it was a charcoal fire, very unique, because it was just a few chapters later, in fact, a few days later, that Peter has gone out fishing, and Jesus is on shore, and Jesus is cooking him breakfast, as well as the other disciples that are out fishing, and he's cooking on a charcoal fire. Peter went from an aroma just a few days ago to a brand new aroma, the same aroma that he had smelled before. Coincidence? I don't think so. I think aromas have a lot to say. 
But another thing about the charcoal is not only its aroma, but when it's done, just like any fire, there's ashes left over. And at that second meeting with Jesus, at that breakfast, Jesus calls Peter to go and feed his lambs and then feed the sheep. I believe that the aroma of the charcoal fire brought back some memories to Peter, but the beauty is Jesus made something beautiful out of those ashes to tell Peter to go and share the good news of Jesus Christ to everywhere. And I think what, what Jesus said to Peter he says to us, he repeats our name a couple times, and then he says, Satan wants to sift you like wheat. He wants to steamroll you. He wants to squeeze life out of you with a goal of you never rising again. But I have prayed for you. And when you return, strengthen those around you because I make beauty out of ashes. Reflecting on difficult experiences takes courage, but it makes us authentically grateful and the question maybe we need to ask ourselves, what do I need to do? What, what do, do, I, do I need to go back and revisit a conversation? Do I need to go back and visit a relationship? Do I need to go back and visit a circumstance? Is, is there more that I can learn from this event? And from that, and this isn't easy, Jesus, I'm giving it all to you. Will you please make something beautiful out of all that wasn't? His answer is, I am able, and yes, I will. But I need you to do something. Let go of it. Release it to me. Not long ago, I had to take a vehicle to the mechanic, and I, I described the issues that the car was having when I dropped it off. Uh, and it, I mean, it was my professional opinion what was wrong with the car. And the mechanic says, no, I think it's this. Now, I could have told the mechanic, no, I know what is wrong, and you're going to change this part that I say is wrong. He would have been more than happy to do that, and he would have been even happier to give me the bill for it, and it wouldn't have fixed the original problem. But I said, you're probably right. You have more experience in this, and you have the tools to do this. Go do what you believe is the right thing to do. And you know what? He was 100% right, the car was fixed, and I got the proper bill. If I would have offered to help, I'm sure he would have been more than happy to charge even more. If we desire God the Father to make beauty from ashes, we have to be willing to humble ourselves under his mighty hand and allow him to treat what the real problem is, not the surface issue, but the heart issue, that it may bring him the glory that he deserves. Bye-bye.